M1 Global presents. Представляем вашему вниманию главное событие сегодняшней битвы в сердце континента. Пятираундовый бой за титул чемпиона M1 Challenge в полутяжелом весе. предстоит биться с Виктором Немковым. Немков хороший боец, очень опытный боец. Можно сказать, один из лучших бойцов России, получил России. Дрался с многими хорошими бойцами. А Виктор, он, я думаю, он универсальный боец, он чувствует себя хорошо как и в стойке, так и в партере. Функционально очень хорошо подготовлен. На это я готовился к этому, готовился с пятирандового боя, много боролся, много работали в стойке, но я думаю, я готов. Всем известно наше противостояние со Штефаном Тутсом. В крайнем бою мало кто верил в мою победу, но я все-таки одержал победу. Вот. И сейчас предстоит защита пояса, защита даже в какой-то мере сложнее, чем просто забрать пояс. Соперник у меня из э, знаменитого именитого клуба «Горец». Очень опасные стойки, и борется неплохо. Чемпион мира по смешанным единоборствам, по любителям. Хотя у него мало профессиональных боев, но у него очень большой опыт в смешанных единоборствах. Поэтому я думаю, что бой будет очень тяжелый, э, равный. Ну, я думаю, что запомнится зрителям надолго. Пояс мне достался очень тяжело, поэтому я не собираюсь терять его при первой защите. Тренировочный процесс у нас проходил в Старом Осколе. Большой упор сделали на функциональную подготовку и на работу против левши. Так как соперник на левша, поэтому в ударной технике много времени уделяли работы против левши. Я хочу забрать этот пояс и удержать его как можно дольше. Витя, Кубигорец уже есть один пояс. Надеюсь, в бой два. Рашид, пояс останется у меня. И точка. Спортсмен в синем углу ринга представляет клуб «Горец» Республика Дагестан. Встречайте, Рашид Юсупов! Потому что я горец. 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 Потому что я горец. Yeah.
Дамы и господа, в красном углу ринга действующий чемпион М1 Челлендж в полутяжелом весе. Спортсмен представляет клуб Александр Невский ОМК, город Старый Оскол. Встречайте, Виктор Немков! Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is for the M1 Challenge Light Heavyweight title. Now introducing your challenger in the blue corner. This fighter is 23 years old. He weighed in at 92.7 kilograms. He stands 185 centimeters tall and has an unbeaten record of seven wins with no losses. He is a national MMA champion, European MMA champion, World MMA Champion and International Master of Sports in MMA from Goretz Team Dagestan. Please welcome Rashid Yusupov. And now your fighter in the red corner. This fighter is 28 years old. He weighed in at 93 kilograms. He stands 185 centimeters tall and has an impressive record of 25 wins and two losses. He is the winner of the World Combat Sambo Cup, winner of the first season of M1 Fighter Reality Show. He is the current M1 Challenge Light Heavyweight Champion from Alexander Nevsky, Russia, Viktor Nemkov. And your referee for this bout, Marco Bruison. Red corner, blue corner, center of the rage. Championship bout, five rounds, five minutes. You both know the rules. Listen to my command. Protect yourself all the time. Make it a good hand. Shake hands. Get back to your corner. Judge, 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 time ready, contender ready, champion ready, fight! Well here we go ladies and gentlemen, our main event of the evening in the blue corner, Rashid Yusupov in the red corner, the light heavyweight champion Viktor Nemkov. Well as we said on VT, Yusupov I think will have to take this down to the ground, keep his opponent there, submit 
of ground and pound him because I just think Nemkov is going to be too good at standing. But like I say, he's been learning the grappling with the greats. Yeah, with the greatest. <laughs> the grappling throws, the takedown defense, the takedowns himself. You have to learn how to do it to know how to avoid it. Indeed, and I mean, Fedor is watching over this fight right now. He's sitting like Braden ringside right now. Oh. I like it. Nemkov's already a little more aggressive than he was against Put. Well, Yusupov's has to be coming into this fight with a little bit of confidence just because of his record alone, 7 and 0. Well, it's, it's an impressive record, and he also trains with the renowned Gorets fight team in Dagestan. As you saw, he got a hero's welcome as he came out, the entire team, because there were a lot of them were on the amateur championships, the entire team, team came out chanting his name and cheering him on. So that's going to be a big boost for him as well. And that's, that's also where M1's middleweight champion trains as well, Ramazan Emiv. <laughs> Slight tentative start, but Nemkov in the lead, he's pushing the pace. Well, they're not be, be pushing it too hard, to be honest. They've got five rounds. You know, it, it, if you study your opponent and fail that, they weaken in the first round, you know, it takes them two, three rounds to get warmed up, then go hard and heavy. But, you know, both these guys know that the seasoned veterans, they're not going to they're not gonna rush anything too quick. New spots gym is also where their former coach the soul of the team, as they referred to him, was gunned down in the assassination. The team apparently has never been the same ever since, but they still have a middleweight champion in M1 and a light heavyweight title contender. So I think the team's doing just fine. Oh, nice left hand. Nice left spirit there by Yusupov. Both. Both fighters actually started their, out their careers in the M1 Global's banner, so it's very interesting to see them converge at this point in their career, both of them being born and bred out of the, the M1 Global promotion. You spoke to do very good for the exchanges right now. You know what, I was just about to say, I'm, I'm surprised that it's been on his feet this long, because we know Nemkov's well known for his striking ability. You know, Yusupov must be really comfortable. I thought he would have went for the takedown, tried to get on top of Nemkov and finish the fight from there. But he might be a little bit of a false sense of security, but you know, three minutes gone in the fight, I think he's quite happy to stand. Well, the Gortz team in Dagestan is not one that tends to entirely focus on grappling or the, the, the grappling arts in general, wrestling or whatnot, like most of the other Dagestani teams do. It's quite, it's quite the thing that actually differentiates them a lot. They tend to use that wrestling base to create a striking advantage, where they know they can't be taken down, they know they're comfortable on the ground, but they prefer to strike with their unsuspecting opponent. Oh, nice left hand again! It's the sort of approach you tend to get out of Emiv a lot, and I'm wondering if that's what we're going to see out of Yusuf tonight. Victor Nemkov, on the other hand, has been all over the place. Uh, he's compiled several key wins, including one over UFC signee Abdelkarim Edelov, the former M1 light heavyweight champion Stefan Putz, who just fought in our co main event. It was a 12 and 1 record in the losses to Vinny Makales for the light heavyweight title back in M1 back in 2011. A lot has changed over those five years, Ian. A lot. Well, we've got under one minute, and it looks like Yusupov is slowly but surely winning this round. You know, it, 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 more so the fact that he's hitting his target more than what, than what Nemkov is. Certainly seems so. I wonder if the judges agree with us, though. A little bit of blood on the right kneecap there, if you notice the side of the kneecap. Interesting to see it now, yeah. It's dripping down. To be honest, he could have had like a, a mat burn or something there with a bit of scab and it's come, it's come off because it's an unusual place. Normally get it on the shin if he clashes shins, but... Yeah. You know, it's interesting. We've seen quite a few fighters with, the, with that carpet burn from the, from the ring today. Don't regularly see that. Or at least I have to see went for a spinning kick. Oh! Just a little too late. I don't think it was enough to lose the round. I think he just hipped it. The striking just seemed a little bit more clinical. You spotted it. 
Victor Nemkov's training in the Stario school, but with Fedor's team obviously there and Fedor's renowned coach Vladimir Voronov. But it's very interesting to know that Voronov actually isn't in this corner tonight, which is quite rare. You see him at M1 events quite regularly. Yet here we are tonight and at different coaches talking to Nemkov. I wonder if that's going to have any impact on his psyche at all. Some specific fighters like having certain people in their corner regularly, but that doesn't happen in fact like defensively. I don't think you agree with me there yet. I do agree with you, yeah. And sometimes all it takes is a little bit of advice, the correct advice. It may only be a small thing, but in between rounds you get that one little bit of advice which can change the whole fight around. I also feel that there are certain fighters who, who only respect and listen to very key people in their life that, they, that things would go through to them more when they hear it from a very specific person. And if that's their sort of their uh, father-like coach figure like Vladimir Voronov is, then I think that that would be very key to have in this corner. But anyway, we'll see how this plays out over the following up to four rounds. Oh, nice knee to the body. Yusupov threw a lovely knee. Nemkov shot in, ended up going to his knees and followed up with the knee. I don't know if it's wrong for me to say, but Yusupov just looks that little bit sharper than Nemkov right now. Really does. I'll have to agree with you there, Ian. I don't like that he's consistently moving backwards, though. I'd like to see him go forward against Nemkov. You can see that Nemkov's capable of backing him up. But it seems he's got the awareness to not get caught in the corner. And I'd like to see Victor Nemkov actually take advantage of his push forward. Because he's going forward and then we're getting we're seeing nothing out of it really. We're seeing no kicks, we're seeing no jabs, we're seeing nothing. What use Bob is doing when he steps back, half a step, two steps, he then fires the right hand, so the left hand is left handed. He steps back one, one or two steps. Sees Nemkov coming forward, left hand down the pipe. He's done that about three or four times in this round already. Is this having any impact on Nemkov? I wonder if he's uh, slightly confused fighting a uh, left handed person. It can, it can put the off. Oh! Well, that hit the mark. His coach is asking for him to go for the kill now. Nemkov still seems awake. Oh, nice little kick. Good catch, though. Well, might have been for the kill for a short time, but I think it was very far and not to win the kill too much. But sometimes fighters can go over the top, get a little bit too excited and get caught in something. But the game is new up against a fight like Nemco. Surprisingly, in the crowd seems to be in Rashid's favor. They're chasing Rashid's name right now. Oh, slip. What the hell? 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 What the well, I was just about to say that looked very close. Obviously, southpaw versus north dogs. The left hand is the southpaw's main advantage and vice versa. The right hand is the orthodox main advantage. So that, that is something they have worked on because every time you see the right hand, you can see the right hand. Step back two steps. Well, he's definitely taking that counter. Now I need some Zahadi, Rashid. Corpus, 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 Corpus. We truly believe, or at least like what we spoke about earlier, was that it would require the grappling element of the game. And I, to be honest, I'm, I, not that I, I, I don't think Yusupov has a, a, a striking background, but obviously he's proven he has. I just didn't think it was the next one. And I honestly think Nemkov didn't see this coming as well because, as he said, that's what he really did. Trained specifically on his conditioning for five rounds and his grappling. That's not to say he didn't do any striking whatsoever, but that's to say that it maybe the second one did a takedown. Yeah, exactly. 
What? You sure? What up? No, I can't do it. Make a mistake. Stop trying to take advantage. Up against the ropes. He's going to go for a trip. Peppering him slightly. Some to the knee as well. See, as we were talking about earlier, when, you, when your back is up against the ropes like that, it, it's not as easy to work off it. Because when you've got a cage or fencing, you know, you've got more of a base to punch off. How is it the ring ropes particularly, or the ring versus cage debate? I think the, the ring's weakest element, in my opinion, is this sort of position. Oh, nice take down. Oh, 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 that good that knee too! That knee hurt him. He doubled up there. You two good oh, rounds there. Shocking everyone. You know, there's no obviously with the record of seven and all. There's no yeah, that's that 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 so I didn't think he was going to dominate like this. Он не быстрый. Ну же четко, ну лед. Dagestan, Gorets fight team, looking to have their second champion. Он не сбивает, он не быстрый. Ты первый мужчина. Two on the M1 roster, two champions. At the same time on the M1 roster, that would be quite an achievement for a team that supposedly lost its soul when their former coach was assassinated. It's a sad story, but it's fantastic to see them Regroup pushing, it, regenerate. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because many believe that that was that was the end of the team, that there was nothing left, that the team would disperse into different Dagestani, that different Dagestani fight would disperse across different teams and would move around, etc. etc. But believe it or not, they stuck together like glue. If anything, they're stronger now. Yeah, yeah. Certainly yeah. has a brother who they have. I've spoken to Ramazani Beeb about it. He has a very hard time speaking about the subject. They were all very close to, to the coach. They saw his father figure in many ways, and it was very difficult to see. And I'm sure Rashid Yusuf was thinking about him as he fights Victor Nemkov right now. Well, we're in the third of possible five. <laughs> My goodness, you can hear a pin drop now. Very different to the way this arena was a few minutes ago. Whoa. All night, really. What I've noticed as well, what's the name? Very nice kick there. What's the name of See if he would move forward. But as soon as Yusupov goes on the back foot, he's not chasing down because he knows that they're hands. Did I catch that correctly? Or was that kick by use of an oblique kick, sort of like John Jones's attack, that controversial attack? Or was it? Can I be honest with you? Sure. I missed it. <laughs> I missed it. It looked to me. Oh my! Oh, very nice. And now he's actually backing Nemkov up for the first time in the fight. He's really backing Nemkov up. Yeah, I do apologize. I missed that kick for cameraman who was in front of us now. Step to the corner of the ring, and it just as it happened, I heard you shout to Anis to kick. It definitely looked like that John Jones oblique style kick to uh, the knee, and if that was the case, you've never seen an M1 fight, or at least I haven't seen it so far. It would be a very, very powerful weapon to integrate into a lot of these fighters' arsenals. Even though many see it as controversial, mind you. Oh, we've got a fight on our hands here. Yeah. If Nemkov loses this round, there's a very good chance he loses the past of the day. Nemkov's not throwing as many punches as he normally does. Oh, this is... Yeah, he's, he's hesitant, isn't he? In contrast to his matchup against Puts a few months ago, this is startling, really, to be honest. It's shocking performance. Very different from what we saw. Nemkov is not smiling or as strong as he's fighting. It's very difficult to get a sense of his uh, psyche. 
his appearance on the or determine anything to determine based on what appearance we see during fights. We can really doesn't tell you anything about how his weight cut is going or his preparation is going. He's quite stone faced in time generally. The face you're seeing right now in the cage is the exact same face you'll see at lunchtime the day before and the same face you'll see tomorrow morning. Seconds left to go. Three or five. Well, I'm glad I don't have to be a judge of this fight here. Yeah. It is very close. <laughs> very close. You think that, you know, 30 seconds left to go, 15 seconds left to go now, you know, one would attempt to take down. Either one solidify the round with that takedown. But there's a nice left hand again. Spit flying, blood trickling, we're seeing it all here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. End of the third round there. My oh my, it's very difficult to tell if Yusupov's got a firm lead or if Nemkov's creeping back into it. Well, Yusupov did seem to come forward that little bit more than the end. Certainly did. Certainly did. Well, we're just a few seconds away from the championship rounds. The fight's definitely gone very different from what we expected here. Totally different than what we expected. Uh, That's the beauty of MMA sometimes, isn't it? My, my, my visualization is this is Nemkov going forward, catching, using both the strikes, using both get the take down. And obviously, uh, Nemkov would have to learn what he loves with Fedor to get back to his feet. The stone faced Fedor is watching on, very cool, calm, and collective. Sitting ringside as the president of the Russian Union of MMA. And since there were amateur championships as the undercard for this M1 Challenge 66 event, Fedor naturally had to be in attendance for the show. And his teammate, the main event, definitely was a cherry on top for him. Well, like I said, championship rounds, round four here. <laughs> Nemkov truly feeling down slightly. Not a lot, but down slightly. Is that the kick you're talking about? That is the kick yeah, I'm well, talking about. That's a side kick, a turning kick. The oblique kick is when you turn your feet the opposite way around. And you're, sorry, you're, you're thrown with the heel. I see. And that can actually knock your knee out. <laughs> yeah, that was the clearest I actually got to see the kick there when we threw it this time around. There's some people call it a stomach kick, side kick. You turn your foot to the outside, you turn it on the outside and you kick with your heel. There was a beautiful left hand, I think you must be balanced slightly. I'd like to use both keep up the pace. You never know what happens when it comes to judging these fights. 
Oh, nice shot. Good shot. You know what I love? Every time I ever got a shot, you should come to me on his wheel. Every time. So warning and a reminder. Every time you come in, I'm going to hurt you. Every time. Every time. Nemko must be single. Right I'm not sure if I get up my you stay for him. Sam, 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 Bakiru, now Noshka Bakiru, 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 Wrestlers turn to striking, we've seen strikers turn to grappling. He can just fire it on a dime. It's like as soon as Nemkov steps forward. You've got to understand, these are light heavyweights. You know, just got weighing in now over the light heavyweight division of 93 kilos. That's what they weigh in at. Something. There's something on the ground, oh. but yeah, I, I don't think the referee noticed it. It's like tape or something. Yeah. Like that. Had to get it off him, that's why the fight was fairly. We got one minute left in the fourth round, Ian. We're no closer to determining who the winner is just yet. If I was a gambling man, I would say you know, it's just he's out striking, not not in, in abundance. It's not uh, more, more power shots against power shots. It's more for the fact that he's connecting more. Nice shot, beautiful. Oh, that could have been that. What did I see at the end of the third round? Why is it going to be take down the solidified the round? And that's exactly what it is. Smart strategy at the exact right time. Well done. When the strike it is so close, for half minutes, in which it is, it's so close, get around with the takedown. Solid finish in the round for Nemco. I've never seen a fighter enjoy having water poured on him as much as Nemco yeah. just did. He closed his eyes. It was like heaven, wasn't it? Sitting under a waterfall is what it seemed like there. There's that left hand. And like I said, it's not so much the amount of time you scored it, it's how clinically you throw it. You know, it, it hits its mark all the time. That was an impressive shot, definitely. Yeah, beautiful takedown. That was the pivotal moment right there in the fourth round. Pivotal moment.
And what the camera missed over the, while well, well, showing the replays there was Lagora's coach standing and giving precise instructions about how to strike for the fifth and final round. That's what I'd like to see more of. Instead of coaches telling you, you can do this, change the position, actually give actual feedback and advice that will legitimately help your fighter progress. Both guys have come alive, they're both bouncing on the feet, it means a lot to them. And obviously the belt means a lot to Nemkov, he wants to keep it. But he's got to do more than bounce. What I have liked about watching Rashid Bitakov is he doesn't look too fierce at all. Oh, Baba Dai, Baba Dai. Oh, nice. He does not look fierce at all. This is a big moment for him. Big moment for his team, big moment for one, but yet he's handling it like a throne. Oh! Now it's so clear to me that it's a sidekick. That kick more now. Did you see? Did you see the escape from that kick? He caught the kick and as it was in the air, he should have gone front deep them to get away from it. Well, when these two guys wake up in the morning, then of course, they look in the mirror and see he's been in a fight. He should have gone another hand. Does it look at this one arm on his face? Ray looks like he's taking part in the sparring session at this point. Then again, that sort of damage isn't everything, but at the same time... No, but what I mean is, it's, it's going back to my thing about the accuracy of what you should have had. That's a round to go. <laughs> Both fighters taking turns, turns to change at each other. I just wonder if Nemkov's got a more helpful end in the last minute. Well, this is just to ask you, I mean, what needs to happen right now in the final two minutes? Or less than two minutes now, especially for the defending champion. Well, the thing is, if you, if you go too hard and too heavy, too early in the round, you gas yourself out before you get beat. There's a minute left, five seconds, four health for leather. Obviously, professionally. Oh, nice takedown. Oh, oh. Yeah, but I've seen both for it. And then I've seen the round on the eyes of the people. Because we know that Emcom definitely won one round with a takedown that he had. I'd like to think. It could be as far as level 10 is going to be 2-2 heading into the final round. Minutes ago, this fight is the main event of the evening for the light heavyweight title. Rashid Yusufov putting up a bigger fight than many of us expected here. So much so that this is within his grasp. So he's just looked up at the top of Yusufov. He wants to have 30 seconds left to go now. So we're dying now. I think both guys are going to stand in front of the Good 
down to the final 10 seconds. The light heavyweight title is on the line. There's a takedown and he gets it. That could just clinch him the title. Wow. He gets up with a roar of celebration. Knows he put up a great performance. Whilst Victor Nemtsov takes his time getting up. Contemplating how the past five rounds went. We certainly don't know what happened, ladies and gentlemen. We don't know the decision just yet. I'll lead it to Ian to determine who has won this fight momentarily. Для награждения спортсменов в ринг приглашается президент Федерации ММА Оренбуржья Виктор Фролов, президент Лиги М1 Глобал Вадим Финкельштейн и легенда смешанных боевых единоборств мира Александр Шторм Шлеменко. Друзья, мы приветствуем, аплодируем, ждем решения судейской команды. Но перед этим, пользуясь случаем, позвольте еще раз напомнить, что грандиозные события всех нас ждет в Санкт-Петербурге 16 июня. Александр Шлеменко сразится с Вячеславом Василевским. Саш, в предыдущем бою в Москве, по-моему, что-то недосказано, нет? У меня нету. Я все сказал тем боем. Единственное, что меня расстраивает, конечно же, хотелось встретиться в финале с настоящим финалистом. Ну, пускай будет Вячеслав. То есть ты считаешь, что Вячеслав не достоин дать настоящую рубку, настоящий бой? Но он проиграл в полуфинале, и он выходит в финал. Это подарок судьбы для него. Это действительно так. Но мы все поклонники смешанных боевых единоборств ждем с нетерпением этой схватки. Победит сильнейший! А сегодня мы болеем за Александра Шлеменко! И его потрясающую команду. Я думаю, 16-го тоже мы будем болеть за меня. Спасибо всем. А сейчас, дорогие друзья, мы узнаем, кто же стал победителем в этом бою. Спортсмены на центр. Рашид, Виктор, Ян Фриман. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a split decision in favor of your winner and the new M1 Challenge light heavyweight champion, Rashid Yusupov. New champion, M1 Challenge, full of strong weight. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Just like Ian and I were saying, it was very, very close to crowning a new champion. And the split decision the judges have determined that Rashid Yusupov is indeed M1 Global's new light heavyweight champion. Thank you very much for tuning in to M1 Challenge 66. We'll see you next week in Baku, Azerbaijan for M1 Challenge 67. Arimbuk, всем добрый вечер. Спасибо, что пришли поддержать. Я уже второй раз в Оренбурге и второй раз побеждаю. Я уже люблю этот город. Большое спасибо. Хочу поблагодарить всех моих тренеров, которые подготавливали меня. Спасибо, кто полечил мое колено, это Тимур. Спасибо мою за функциональную подготовку. Анзор, Гамзат, Гумцентр, Баркал Мурат, директор Кинайта России, который оказывает поддержку нам. Спасибо. Большую благодарность хочу выразить моим тренерам. Это Сухраб Магомеду Муштарим, Шамилю Алибатыру, Магомеду Магомеду. Рамазанову Магомеду, всем большое Баркала, и все братья, которые здесь собрались, и всем моим спарик партнерам которые поддерживали меня, всем Асалам Алейкум! Рашид Юсупов, Гурец, Дагестан, Россия! Ну, мы, дорогие...